Uh, Everett, uh, Anne mentioned uh, maintenance or wantonet in this sort of setting. Um, granted, we wouldn't be using maintenance pamitrexid because of the histology, and it, again, based on histology, is not a bevacizumab candidate. Would you entertain that? Would you observe if he did well after four to six cycles? So I think it's a uh, interesting idea. Um, you have a patient who I agree should receive doublet therapy. I'm very comfortable with a weekly schedule uh, for this kind of treatment. Um, this is a long concept we actually studied in CLGB even in the 1990s uh, with Rogeria Lillenbaum comparing one versus two in uh, patients with weight loss or um, uh, older age uh, and sometimes performance status too. To uh, then move on um, after four to six cycles in a patient who is older, and Roy mentioned uh, quality of life as a consideration, I might actually wait uh, in this given patient. Uh, realizing though that erlotinib would be an excellent choice to treat the patient with at a later time, um, but I might not in this specific case automatically veer into that. You discuss maintenance with the patient? I would discuss it and uh, then see that would this patient might want to have a break. Wouldn't necessarily encourage it, though. Karen, your thoughts on maintenance and a squamous patient is doing well on initial treatment? So I generally don't use erlotinib as maintenance in squamous cell patients. Um, if they're doing well on the initial regimen without uh, significant toxicity, um, with something like gemcitabine, I might continue, continue gemcitabine. Mm -hmm. um, but in with most with the taxanes, I generally don't continue. Would give them a break and watch them closely and consider second line therapy if there was four signs. cycles, six cycles of taxanes. Generally well. four with four. the elderly patients. Roy, would you offer maintenance? Probably not. I think you know I'd certainly mention it to the patient. And if I did do maintenance, it would have to be with either gemcitabine or erlotinib. But my sense here would be to probably go for four cycles, wait, and then, you know, if when the patient does uh, start to grow again, then we have other options. How often do you image them if uh, they were in the observation mode? Probably I would do every three months. Every three sense. months? Every three oh. months. Uh, you know, again, you know, certainly if they have symptoms, they could come in sooner. But given that we have limited options and it's a palliative situation, I try to draw it out. Um, Maybe, maybe you could see them once at six weeks, you know, for the first follow-up. But Make I, sure I they haven't progressed at that point. Yeah. Karen, you'd follow the same scenario? Generally, yeah. um, about three months, yes. Three months. Yeah. Yeah, I usually do eight weeks. Yeah, I tend to do eight weeks as well, Everett. You want to well, break the time? Well, I think, I think uh, <laughs> eight weeks is what I would usually do again in this patient. I think uh, three months is an excellent choice, uh, particularly if he's symptomatically doing well. So let's change the scenario a little bit. Um, adenocarcinoma, otherwise pretty much the same presentation. No antecedent hemoptysis. Brain MRI is negative. Would you give bevacizumab to the 77-year-old uh, gentleman with uh, um, otherwise potentially candidate for uh, that for an angio inhibitor in this setting? I think uh, that's a uh, not straightforward question, Corey. The First thing I would reemphasize is the principle should be to treat the patient with a doublet and not with a single agent, and there's good data for that, uh, comparing a doublet uh, versus pemetrexid as a single agent. Um, as I understand the data, uh, in a 77-year-old, uh, there would be very little reason to add bevacizumab if this were adenocarcinoma. Um, of course, in squamous, you wouldn't do it in the first place. So uh, as I understand uh, analyses of both Point Break and ECOG 4599, um, the uh, advantage of adding bevacizumab to the doublet diminishes as age progresses, and at 75 years of age is the cutoff point. He would be above that, um, and so based on the data, he should not receive it. Yeah, these are two uh, separate retrospective analyses, but in aggregate, above 75, there, whatever survival advantage existed below that age seemed to disappear, plus there was more toxicity, including grade 5 events. Um